Hey everyone, it's Caroline and I'm glad to be back. And I want to show you what I've been working on, which is some spring and Easter cards and even have a birthday card to show you. But what I have done is prepared lots and lots of card fronts. And most of the things I will be showing you are with Anna Griffin dies with a few diamond press uh, die cuts also thrown in like the the sentiments. But basically what I've done is taking a piece of cardstock, attached a beautiful die cut, and then gone through all the layering that it takes to make a beautiful uh, card front. And I usually make five by seven cards just because I love the size of the real estate it gives me. And let me just quickly go through the process. First of all, on another day, I take a like 110 pound cardstock, sometimes 100 pounds. I just get this off of Amazon and I go ahead and cut it to 10 by 7 for all my uh, all my card bases. And I go ahead and score it in the middle. And I do not fold it yet. And I go ahead and stamp my um, signature on the back here and have those ready to go. So what I do, and I'll show you an example, and these are some that I've already made um, using a card base, a die cut, and different layers, all the flowers and everything that goes into making a card and um, a lot of pop-up pop up dots and foam stickers, foam squares to help it help it. So here is a happy Easter, Easter blessings. This is a thank you card um, that I've used. I put thank you on the inside, but one of a kind. And some of these I have already pre-cut probably months and months ago, ready to go. I don't want to have to spend a lot of time doing all the embellishment die cutting um, when I'm more concerned about the base that I want to be using. So as you can tell, I have a pretty big stash. And let's just work on this birthday card. So what I've done is, here's my 5 by 7 card. Card base, I should say. Here is my pre-cut card base. And what I do is take this ATG gun. And since I know that this is going to go on every corner, I go ahead and run glue strips as close to the edge as possible on the card front. Make sure it gets every corner. Then I, standing by standing up, I line up the corners and the tops. Because to me, that's the most important. And you do have to take your time and make sure that it's a really good fit. Sometimes you have to trim a little off on the bottom or the edge if you get it crooked. But that's okay. And then just press down. Okay? And once you see that it's all connected, all glued in, that is when I fold on the score line. And it makes a perfect card. And as you can see, there's lots of layers in here. And I don't mind spending the extra card postage uh, to put these in the mail. And I do mail lots and lots of cards. So, like I said, I want to get... Uh, real estate, you know, the most real estate I can on a card front for the mailing. I try to keep it as uh, flat as possible, but sometimes it just kind of bulks up. So as you can see, again, I put the tape on the outer edges of that 5x7. I line it up very carefully on the edges. You see, sometimes it's a little off, but to the, um, to the receiver, they won't mind and they won't notice. So, I have a couple more to do. 
and I hope you like this. Something just simple, but um, definitely worth the effort to get a lot of cards done at one time and in the mail. So, see you next time.